He's moving on with his life as if nothing ever happened. He is texting with his realtor about putting his house on the market. He is calling the girls' school and telling them that they won't be coming back to school anymore. He even Googled the lyrics to a song by Metallica called Battery. Chris is thinking that nobody has any suspicions of what's gone on. He doesn't know that Nicole Atkinson takes it upon herself to call 911. I believe he thought he could pull it off. Chris might have gotten away with murder if it weren't for Nicole Atkinson. This is my flesh and blood. This is like what I wanted all my life. Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning last night, and I haven't been able to get a hold of her this morning. She's not answering the door. She's not responding to text messages, phone calls. I've had other friends reach out to her. None of us can get her to respond to us. Shanann's best friend, Nicole Atkinson, had a gut feeling that something was wrong. Alrighty, we do have a call in. Nicole, we'll have an officer come out that way as soon as we can. Ben. Hi. You're Nicole? Yes. Okay. So what's going on? So my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. All right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9, and I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. Her husband and her supposedly are separating, but she didn't know this. She thought they were just having issues. He goes, I called him, and I was like, have you talked or heard from Shanann since she left for work this morning? Because I can't get a hold of her. I called. I texted. Her car's in the garage. Her shoes she wears every single day are right in the front door. She only has one vehicle? No, they only have the one vehicle and his work truck. Okay. Shannon, are you home? Police department, if anyone's inside, make yourself known. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see anything out of place. I'm not hearing kids. I'm not hearing anything. The police officers wear a camera so that they can document the conversations between a suspect or witness. I'm sent these police cams to analyze right. them to be able to detect whether the person is, has suspect behavior or demeanor. Scott, how you doing? How's it going? So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that yeah. she would drive. Okay. What's interesting is the garage door opens and instead of yelling out for Shanann, he stops and opens up their car and starts looking through the car. This is a stalling tactic to kind of gather his thoughts up a little bit. He then walks in the house and is never heard calling their names as if he knows they're not home. He goes in the house, he's in there for about a minute by himself, nobody goes in with him. Can we go in the house? I mean, that's up to him, it's his house. He goes. And that's when he comes around and politely lets in the police officer, Nicole Atkinson, and her son. Matt, if I come in, Chris? They go upstairs, there's no sign of the girls there. They go in the basement, there's no sign of Shanann or the girls. Does she work? Yeah, she works from home. home. Oh, from home. She works this is her lifeline. This could be the ticket to all the information. Like, she left the phone behind. But here's the other thing is, is that he didn't think that it was odd that the phone was left there. Do you know her password? Um, I don't know her password. It used to be 2385, and now it's six digits. It's the baby's due date. I don't believe Chris had planned to have the phone discovered. I think he planned to come back later and make some changes and do what he had to do to make it look as if Shanann was wandering around with her phone and doing other things. He seems to be anxious. You can see this rocking movement in his body language. Because you, you told me that she went on a play date with the girls. Then... That's what she told me. But instead of frantically calling around, asking for help, finding his wife, or if anyone's seen her, He's texting people. He's trying to take attention off of himself, transferring his anxiety onto that phone. Nicole is like a hound dog. She knows something's up. She knows something's off. And she's looking over at Chris going, you know, what the heck is wrong with you? What time do you leave today? What time do I leave there? Come down here. Uh, usually between 5.36. Come on. Is Shannon here then? 
Yes. Yeah, we do from that. At one point, the police officer is asking questions about where they might have been, and Chris conveniently walks straight into the bedroom and comes straight out, and on his finger is Shanann's wedding ring. And he's pointing it out almost like he's pointing a gun. You know, here it is, I found the ring. This is the missing evidence. I still to this day believe that was her wedding ring that he took out of the car. Is this on continually yep. recording? I get cars driving from this street, from this street. And this is him at 517. It shows Chris very clearly walking out of the house by himself, backing his truck up into the driveway, and then loading something into the back of his truck. What Chris Watts does, he's very purposeful. He goes into the garage, he walks out, he's got a gas can. He goes to put it on one side of the truck, and then he thinks twice, goes, well, I can't really put it there. But you can see him kind of moving, like apparently there's not room for it there. That wasn't gonna fit, let's go around to the other side. Oh, okay, now it'll fit, obviously, between the three dead bodies. Suddenly, this guy who had few words has a lot to say. He has an explanation for everything. Then Chris started to fall apart a bit. Chris Watts can barely watch it, right? So when, what happens when you arrest somebody? Get down on the ground, put your hands on your head. So he puts his hands on his head, even though he wasn't told. But that was a surrendering moment. That's almost as if Chris was verbally saying, Oh my gosh, I was not expecting this. And you see him pacing and moving, nervous and anxious. Chris Watts' body language is betraying him. So right now, police don't have probable cause to be able to arrest him because it still isn't clear where Shanann, Bella, and Cece went. They're never seen leaving the house. Appreciate your time. Yeah, no Hopefully something comes up here, man. I've never seen him. If he loads his stuff, he normally just walks back and forth because I get him on camera. But the fact that he was in here and explaining to it over and over and over, well, um, but it doesn't, he doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his tracks. Police in Colorado have issued an alert for a pregnant mother and her two young daughters. Like, I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Like, if she wasn't here, like, where did she go? I'm just hoping right now that she's somewhere safe. And when I saw him on the news, I knew there was foul play. There was just a huge element missing with him. If she's vanished, like, I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. There was something more to this case, and the focus really started to center in on Chris.